In this video, I'm going to use my scope and the FFT function in my scope to characterize the signal, the transmit signal, as it moves through my Dueling 612's uh, transceiver. Here's a setup I'll be doing for the remainder of tests. I've got my uh, Dueling 612's uh, transceiver here. I have got the BFO and the LO uh, connected to the Park uh, SIGGEN prototype and I've got clock zero uh, putting out 4.913 megahertz and clock two uh, clock zero will be the BFO and clock two will be the LO which will be uh, a 12.01 uh, megahertz. Right now they're both on and those signals are coming out of clock uh, zero and one and that's being fed into the two mixers. I have got the microphone jack. Here I've got the connected to this little uh, microphone I made, and that's going over to my phone. And my phone uh, is running a little program here that can generate a tone. So if I was to hit the play button here, it's going to generate a tone. It's going to generate a 1500 hertz tone, which will be uh, picked up by the microphone and fed through the system. So for the first test, I've got my uh, scope probe here connected to the output of the uh, uh, SA612 and after the matching transformer here. So this probe here is going to be seeing the imp impedance of uh, the crystal filter and the transformer. The crystal filter is around 600 ohms so I need to set the scope to uh, uh, 600 ohms. So here's the FFT on the scope. And if I go over to my DBM load, my unit load here, it's set to DBM. And my load is set to 600 ohms. And I have got... It's set for the middle to 4.913 megahertz, and I'm looking at 5 kilohertz uh, per division because I want to see the audio get mixed in. And you can hear my voice. You can see my voice is modulating the carrier there. There, you can see the, uh, the, um, the upper and lower uh, mixing. Uh, artifacts there. So right there you can see the, car the carrier that's coming in, that's actually a BFO and the level of that is coming in at minus 30 uh, dBm. I'm going to set the other marker here, the other cursor here, to be in the middle of the noise so that way we can measure the signal to noise ratio. So there. Okay, so now I've got my first cursor in the noise and my second cursor here at the peak. So it's saying that the peak here, the BFO, it's seeing it's uh, minus 31 dBm. Uh, the noise about 94. So we're seeing about 63 dB of uh, signal to noise. So that uh, signal is well above the noise floor there. So I'm going to go now, and I'm going to inject the uh, the audio from the phone. Automatically, you can see that we've got a much uh, uh, much stronger signal coming in, and there you can see all the harmonics. You can see the the carrier coming in, the BFO, and here's all the uh, audio harmonics being mixed in. Here's the plus, here's the fundamental uh, plus mixing, minus mixing, and then these are all the harmonics of the signal mixing with the uh, carrier. So here the peak audio we're seeing, let's measure that. The peak audio is minus 12 uh, dBm. Uh, the, the audio that's mixed with the uh, BFO is minus 12 dBm 
and it's 82 dB above the, uh, the noise floor. So we've got quite a strong uh, signal coming out of the first uh, SA612. So I've now moved the scope probe to the input of the second SA612, so that's after the transformer. So the impedance between the SA612 and the transformer is 1500 ohms. So I'll need to go and change my, the FFT on my scope uh, so that it's, uh, it knows that it's uh, 1500 ohms. So here we'd go into math. And we'd go into unit load, it's dBm, and let's change that to 1500 ohms, or 1 1.5 kilo ohms. So there we go. So now this is all calibrated. And uh, it's very hard to tell, but you can see the carrier there. I haven't changed the scale. This is the peak frequency oscillator there. 4.9 megahertz, 4.913 megahertz, and what you're seeing here, this hump, that's the actual signal being passed by the uh, crystal filter. It's, it's the actual upper sideband being passed due to carrier inversion, um, due to sideband inversion in the second SA612 mixer. We have to pass it the upper sideband. And that'll come out of the upper of the second SA612 as lower sideband. So let's uh, take our cursor here and let's measure how much carrier we have here. So right there, that's showing us that we have. Uh, approximately minus 68 dBm of carrier which is uh, roughly about 26 dB above uh, the noise floor so that carrier is quite high so we may have to tune that out but let's go ahead and inject a tone and see what happens so first thing you notice is that the signal gets up there in, in amplitude and there's the carrier there, and here's that audio frequency there. That's the first, that, that's the fundamental harm, harmonic. If you go back and you look at the prior uh, spectrum, you'll see that there were two peaks. One was the, uh, the plus mixing component, the 1500 hertz, uh, mixing with the BFO and giving the plus component, and this is the minus component. Here's the second harmonic mixing. Again, there, here's the second harmonic mixing as well. So we'll measure the frequency difference between this peak and that peak. And uh, I, I bet uh, that'll be 1500 hertz. But let's go ahead and measure the peak here. So right there's the peak, and it's saying it's minus 17 uh, dBm. And we're getting 77 uh, dB above the noise noise floor here, so that's a, a fairly strong signal coming through. So let's change the cursors to the horizontal cursors, and there it hasn't it's actually uh, set up the same as the prior uh, measurement we took, and sure enough, it's 1500 hertz. So the difference between those two uh, values there is 1500 hertz. So that is in fact the audio frequency mixing with the BFO and coming passing through the uh, crystal filter. And again, it's coming up as the upper sideband. I've now connected the scope probe to the output of the second SA612, which is uh, 1500 ohms. So I don't have to make any changes to the scope because the prior measurement was 1500 ohms. Here's the FFT from the scope for the probe connected to the output of the second uh, SA612. The uh, important thing to note here is that right now the center frequency 
is set for 4.913 uh, megahertz. And uh, uh, the output from the uh, second SA612 is going to be 7.1 uh, megahertz because that's what I have the local oscillator uh, set. So the, the local oscillator mixes with the uh, intermediate frequency uh, in such a way to produce 7.1. Uh, megahertz coming out and it'll be on the uh, lower sideband due to sideband inversion. So let's go ahead and change our center frequency to be 4.9 megahertz. By the way, any signal you see coming out of the SA612 is just uh, mixing artifacts uh, coming through. And uh, that's going to be filtered out by the uh, uh, bandpass filter that's uh, downstream. So we select the center frequency, we push the uh, cursor button, and let's select 7.1, 7.1 megahertz. So there it's set to 7.1 megahertz. You'll see now the signals coming out on the lower side of that 7.1 megahertz. That's the carrier, so we need to we'll need to know that carrier a little bit more because uh, there is some carrier bleeding through. But you can see as I'm speaking, you can see the audio mixing uh, and coming through here in the lower uh, sideband. So let's go ahead and enable the audio. So there's the audio signal coming out and you're seeing it on the lower side of the carrier. So is in fact lower sideband coming out. And uh, let's measure that uh, signal. So let's select the cursor, bring a cursor and it's showing that it's a uh, minus 21 uh, DBM and we're seeing about 73 dB above the noise floor. And uh, let's go ahead and let's measure just to confirm that that is in fact 1500 Hertz there. So let's select the horizontal cursors and let's move one to the peak. We push the button to select the other cursor and we move that over to the carrier and we look at the delta and it is in fact 1500 Hertz so that is the tone definitely the tone coming through as a lower sideband and let's turn off the tone and let's measure the strength of the carrier So I've got a lot of ambient noise. Might be a little bit difficult, but let's go back to the vertical cursors. And I think you could just see the carrier right. It seems to be right down about there. So it's showing the carriers about minus 63. Uh, dB, uh, which is about 30 dB above the noise floor. So that's pretty strong. So we may have to go and uh, uh, knock that down a bit. We'll we'll put it through the uh, bandpass filter and we'll see how how it looks coming out there because that'll be the ultimate test. The scope probe is now connected to the output of the uh, bandpass filter, and I've also got the bandpass filter connected to my 50 ohm terminator so I made sure that that bandpass filter it's a 50 ohm uh, filter so it's uh, properly terminated so we'll need to go and change the scope so it knows that the termination for that measurement is at 50 ohms here's the FFT for the scope and first thing we need to do is to go and change the termination impedance 
So we go to the FFT menu by hitting the math button. We go to the unit load and we change our load here to be 50 ohms. So they're now set to 50 ohms and the measurements we make now are going to be uh, at uh, 50 ohms and the DBM readings are going to be uh, more realistic. You can see the, uh, the lower sideband coming up there and as I speak you can see uh, some audio peaks coming up. Hello! And the interesting thing is uh, the carrier there's virtually no carrier here so the uh, bandpass filter looks as if it's really knocking down uh, the carrier. I guess there's enough insertion loss to make that carrier disappear. However, I won't know that for sure until I get my uh, spectrum analyzer back on its feet again and we could make a more uh, accurate uh, measurement. But let's go ahead and inject the tone here. So there's the tone, and uh, sure enough, it's on the lower sideband because the carrier, I uh, haven't changed anything here. This is set to 7.1 megahertz, which is the carrier right there. And let's make a measurement of that. So we go over to cursors, and we come down, line up our cursor there, and it's saying it's minus 36 uh, dBm. And we're seeing about uh, 58, 59 dB uh, above the noise floor. So it looks as if the signal-to-noise ratio is about uh, uh, 58 uh, dB there. And uh, what I'm going to do as an experiment, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change the frequency of the local oscillator here. And we'll see that peak move as I change that frequency. There, because I'm changing it, you can see the peak moved. So that's as if I'm dialing a different frequency of the radio. So the radio will be transmitting on, instead of 7.1, it'll be transmitting on a different frequency.